Welcome back to the World Championship Series, everybody. Two groups remaining, four players left to find that will represent their countries at the season finals in just a couple of weeks' time when we take the Premier League to Poland. Looking forward to that one. Joining us on the desk this time is Sam and Johan. A fantastic start here for Team Liquid today. Yeah, uh, really strong performance here out of Snoots. Uh, I was very impressed by his reads here. With minimal scouting, he was able to recognize what he was up against, and that went pretty well from, uh, from him uh, from that point. And he finds himself in the winner's match, which will be game four of the day, remember. We're into game two, which is Hitman versus a laser. Jim drops down, unfortunately, to the low bracket, where he fights for a second chance to hopefully make it through in second place later today. But now let's talk a little bit about this upcoming match, a laser versus Hitman. Hitman we don't really know too much about, and it's a pleasure to see him make the journey over here to his first ever tournament that is offline. He's played on online tournaments, of course, from the luxury of his home, but now he's here in Cologne, Germany. Going up against a laser, you've got, you know, the hots for. Yeah, <laughs> I've got the hots for him. Um, no, I, I, I'm Haster, myself, a few other Protoss players in Europe. We all kind of spoke about him a lot, and we've all kind of met him on ladder and agreed how good he is against Protoss. So um, I've got nothing but respect for the guy. Unfortunately, last season he dropped out uh, to major in TLO. He didn't have the best run there, but I'm sure that he's come back this season feeling more confident, feeling stronger, and yeah, really wanting to showcase his skill more. It's a little bit difficult to, to look at the matchup as a whole, really, isn't it? Because we know bits and pieces about Hitman from playing on the internet. We know he's uh, the top of the Grandmaster League in North America, but what else, apart from that, do we really know about him, Todd? No, not much. He, he, has, he has a past, though. Every, everybody's got baggage, and uh, he's got that cheesy player image as well, which, against Zerg, these days, he's definitely hard to, to pull off nearly as much. I mean, we just saw Jim uh, failing big time here pulling off uh, these two base timings. So I feel like there is a very good chance we might see a very similar series here to the first one that we saw today uh, in this one. All right, well, let's talk uh, again about Alesi. He's a 17-year-old player from Poland who made his debut in the WCS just last season, now comes into his second season back-to-back, -back, which in itself is uh, a, prof uh, you know, a good performance from him. But as a player, what type of player is he? Like, aggressive, super aggressive, defensive, is he similar to Snoot? He's kind of a bit of everything, when I've played him at least. He's got these unorthodox timings along with this really, really solid macro play. But the thing that stood out for me was his solid macro play. I felt like uh, with the previous map pool, I felt like if I just defended as a Protoss and just played my standard three base baguette style that I'd eventually win. And the only person that I was really struggling against was a laser. So he's definitely a standout macro player in my opinion. And I think that's definitely going to play to his advantage against a player like Hitman. All right. Well, uh, let, let's move on then and talk a little bit about Hitman then. So um, Hitman, 19 years old. It's funny that he has, like I said, Braid came over for his first tournament. You said about his aggressive style. Is that really the only thing that anyone can take from him as you're going up against him? I think so, yeah. I think it's the one thing that you need to look at and be like, yeah, there's pretty darn good chance he's going to want to be playing very aggressive. I'm gonna, just going to need to be able to identify what he's doing and then try and defend it. Okay, and uh, you think is going to be good at doing that then? Yeah, I oh, yeah. think so. I, I spoke to Eliezer a little bit upstairs when we was having some food, and he was like, uh, as long as I defend his cheeses, I'm going to feel pretty comfortable in today's group. Well, um, Hitman is uh, being at his first ever tournament. I mean, you, you, I mean, you have to go back 20 years for you in your first tournament now, Todd. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's Never a, for you, because you never competed. No, I did, though. I won a tournament, Todd, just like you. This guy never did, though. <laughs> yeah, I won your case a little bit. Um, <laughs> but it, it's a nervous time when, when you're up there for the first time. I mean, look at him. He's got one win, which is his challenge match against Indersider, but that's about it. Yeah, uh, that's definitely going to come into play here, perhaps if he's not mentally prepared enough. Uh, should be though, like he's had a pretty long trip here during which he's got to think about how he's gonna go down while, uh, while playing down here. But it's funny actually, like every time there is like a player that we've never seen before at a tournament like this, and like we all anticipate finally seeing him, we always wonder if like it's gonna be somebody else like with a mask coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 
The, the, like like no Roddy, Roddy comes here with a mask. He's like, yo, what's up? He's like, hey, my, yeah, my name's Hitman. been Hitman forever. Uh, unfortunately not, though. Hitman comes here, and he, he's a happy chap. He's been walking around, just kind of doing his own thing, not too much. He doesn't really know too many of the players here, and it'll be good to see how well he actually is able to compete against this guy, because you've, you've already praised him enough. You, said, you spoke about him a couple of days ago that this is a guy to watch out for, and to be honest, he can rival Snoot and Jim in today's group. He definitely can, and if you take a look at his challenger result there, 3-0 against Welmy, who's a very very formidable opponent so um, I feel like he's definitely going to be feeling confident going up against Hitman but Hitman on the other side of things I feel like he's just going to go into it he hasn't got any expectations people yeah. are just happy that he exists so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah he's, he's a real guy <laughs> one yeah. way to put it I guess <laughs> Yeah, so I think he's just going to be, you know, chilled, relaxed, and just play his game. All right, let's take a look at the map vetoes then. We have got these now done, the, the three maps that we were going to go in towards. And just like that. Just like that. There they are. Terraform Coda and Iron Fortress. Okay, so the first two maps are obviously very standard maps. Um, Terraform's a bit of a tricky one because a lot of Protosses debate which third base to take, but... Is Hitman actually planning on taking a third base or not? That's totally up to him, and we'll have to wait and see. But you found, you found an answer to the question you just asked. Neither, <laughs> neither yeah. base. He well, takes neither yeah, base. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> um, but Iron Fortress on the as the last map, if it does come to that, that's always a tricky one for Protoss. So it but needs to be a two-zero. It needs to be 2 0, otherwise, Protoss is dead. Uh, but going into the first map, then, Terraform is the map that a laser chose. This is a good starting map for him if you're looking at it from the other side of Protoss' perspective. I think so. Like it's, I feel like on Terraform though, it's going to be kind of hard if you want to go for like a cheese to properly get your pylons across the map in terms of trying to hide anything. So if you want to go for a two base, it's going to have to be like obvious. Like you're marching across the map, the Zerg already knows what's coming. You have your probe with your army, and then you start on warping in units there, or even something like a war prism. But Elazer even said he said to you that he kind of knows what he has to do, and I agree with what uh, we all think we might see here. So I feel like that gives him a great advantage over somebody like Hitman. Because E-Laser is, to me, is like a better, stronger, faster, smarter version of uh, Tefl. Mm. And that makes him very dangerous. Like, I have a lot of respect for him. I think he's very good. So in this uh, aggression versus defense game, then, who do you think is coming out on top? I think definitely E-Laser. Yeah, definitely is the, the key word there. Definitely a laser or just a laser? You want, you want more bold prediction from yeah, me? You want I mean, me to the, say that Hitman has no chance and yeah, he wasted his time You were doing in? that yesterday, didn't you? Call it ISO and be like, he's wasting his time being here. <laughs> no, I think he laser. He, he, he definitely has a chance, like, if he really somehow surprises us all, either with, like, the strongest player in terms of, like, two bays and cheese that we've yeah. seen in a long time, or if he was too macro, because I don't think too many people expect him to go, like, up to three bases and be like, Hey, he's taking to Ultras and Broodlords, let's make some Immortals and Tempest and take to Storm. Like, that really would surprise me, and probably Elazer as well. But Elazer has a very strong late game at the same time. So maybe he's wasting his time. Ooh. It's easy for you to pick this, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I've been saying it before the tournament even started. I think Elazer's going to take this one to zero. All right, thank you very much, guys. Uh, do make sure to go to social media and hashtag the WCS. You can post all the pictures of Hitman on the internet as much as you like. And of course, the Facebook and YouTube is slash ESL. It's time to go for the commentary, Tim, for this one. Who's going to come out on top? Who's going to the winner's match? The enigma has been revealed, as we do obviously have Hitman live here in the studios. And he's going to be going up against a mainstay now. I would like to call him a mainstay uh, in a laser, who has managed to qualify for the past couple of seasons of WCS. And it's nice to see him being able to put himself here firmly in, uh, in the scene. Absolutely. You know, uh, he's been around a bit, and his confidence especially is what makes him seem like yeah. a regular now. And a laser there looking very focused, and he is just so confident. You know, I, I like to use the word brash to describe a laser. Mm. And it's not in a bad way. He's one of these young players who comes in and he just oozes confidence, especially in this matchup. So uh, looking forward to what he's going to bring in here on Terraform. Well, let's get into it then. Game at number one. Up to the top left-hand corner, we have our blue Zerg representing Team Extreme Supremacy. It is a laser. And then down to the bottom right-hand corner, we have our red Protoss. And give it up, ladies and gents, for Hitman. Such a, such a you know, mystery in terms of how will he perform here. This yeah. is his first time competing 
in a live tournament and a live setting, you know, just getting used to having all of your uh, PC settings right, you know, playing in a different time zone, flying all the way here. It's a big step for Hitman. And I know there's a lot of players who ladder on the NA ladder out there and they're all wondering, how is this guy that steals all our points day after day going to do up here on the big stage? Well, as Sean already said, you can post all your pictures of him now because he does exist uh, in the words of Bling. So he's not a figment of our imaginations. He is here. And Laser's going to look to try and run him over, though, because uh, as much as, you know, Laser technically is one of the um, opponents that you would rather have going into the WCS round of 32, mm. he's by no means a pushover in the slightest. Far from it. He's, as you said, he's come on leaps and bounds himself in, in recent times. Yeah, I mean, looking at Laser, yeah, he's not the most experienced player, but when you look at his recent record in this matchup against Protoss, mm. he's so comfortable here, and it's even right after the swarm hosts were removed, Laser was already kind of going to tournaments with a smile on his face, getting better and better at the matchup. Ooh. Hitman coming down with that probe. He's thinking about blocking that, but Laser going for a very fast 14 spawning pool into that 15 hatchery, taking uh, no chances with any sort of early proxy gate, cannon rush, anything like that. Looks like Laser's making sure he's completely solid against any of those options. I managed to speak to Laser briefly yesterday and he expected today's group to go pretty fast. Uh, and he was expecting, you know, cheese left and right from these Protoss that he was going to be going up against. And he actually said something quite curious to me, which would be that he was maybe going to hit them first with something. But at the moment, it's not looking like that just yet. Uh, but one thing's for sure is that as much as the analysis desk elaborated on the fact that Elaza has good mid game, good late game as well, he's kind of, you know, likes new in a sense. He can also put on some pressure early on as well. Yeah, absolutely. Laser's a guy who loves to put the ball into his opponent's court. He loves to bring the fight to them. And uh, it was last season, he actually just called himself. He said, you know, like, how do you describe yourself as a player? And he just said, European life. You know, he's like, I, I just like to attack a lot. I love to multitask. Yeah. I love to run in units from every different side. And he does it really very well. We've seen him do a lot of strange attacks, uh, even in Challenger. He was doing some stuff. Ooh, nice Zergling harass. Might actually pick up an early probe kill here. Oh, what? <laughs> I guess, yeah, I didn't want to go up the ramp, I guess. Uh, those rocks, them rocks. He had, a, he had a bone to pick with them. The Zerglings aren't too smart, man. You tell them to attack a probe, they start just hitting some boulders on the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a bit hit or miss. So, they're going to have to move away now, knowing that the Stalker is about to pop and we'll be able to evade that for a moment. That is a quick robo <laughs> facility. Down before five minutes. Oh my. Looks like he's got some aggression planned. Now, that could be for two <laughs> different things. Oh, wow. Well, the Zergling's going to scout it straight away. Absolutely no oh, secrecy to that. And look at this. Laser even kind of getting some damage on the probes, being as annoying as possible. Hitman is being forced to bring back his Zealot. Oh, even the Zergling surrounded on the ramp got out of there. And this, oh, Laser's just exerting his mechanics here. He's just so fast, so good at controlling these lings. And he's just harassing Hitman while getting all the information he needs. A few more Zerglings about to pop here for a laser, as these ones would really have loved to have wiggled down towards the natural and got onto that probe that almost died off. But alas, they will be killed off. But he's got all the information he needs right now. The, the warp prism has begun here. There is still a question in Elaze's mind of what exactly is Hitman's plan, because there's two things, right? You can go for a really fast immortal timing, mm -hmm. or you can just run a warp prism across the map and just start warping in zealots and stalkers off yeah, like seven yeah. gateways. And they do require a little bit of a different response. Obviously, the warp prism option it hits a little bit faster. But here, it looks like a warp prism into a mortal. So Hitman's going to try and put on a little bit of pressure, but he's going to be transitioning into that big immortal push at a little bit later into the game. This seems... Uh, extremely, extremely bold by Hitman, though. 30 workers at the moment, not making any more right now. Lings are going to try and force their way through at this Stalker at the front, but on 30 workers and just the Immortal following up this Warp Prism harass. This so is light harass. This is tough. You know, he can still warp in more units from that warp prism. There's no units at home just now. Some lings are about to pop, though. He should be ready for it. The thing is, there's only one gas in the main base of Hitman. He still is just mining the single gas. Yeah, it's just going to be zealots. This is, 
actually something that ages ago we saw. Yep. And it can be actually be really scary because the only zealots reinforcing those immortals, unless he has like a good chunk of roaches to be able to deal with it, it can be very, very deadly. Spot on. I mean, that's what you need. And the thing is, oh, we see a lair starting for a laser, but he does cancel that. He needs to cancel that. All he needs is roaches and he needs to get a big enough ball up so that he can kill these zealots yeah. in like one shot, you know. You can Move see a back, laser there, the focus on his face. Yeah, you've got to kind of pull them back because mm. if you if you try to fight this with zerglings, he's whooping in seven, eight zealots at a time. They're not going to do anything. Oh, this... Uh, it could be a little bit scary here. The Zerglings are already trying to buy time by killing off the rocks and also trying to buy time by putting pressure on over at the other side of the map. That gateway is actually going to fall and those lanes are probably going to get through. Uh, oh, Photon Overcharge wow. has been thrown down. That's a really nice pickup. Oh. All these buildings going down at home. That's less zealots being warped in at the front. All that minerals. A laser still only has a very small force, though. He mm -hmm. needs to buy a little bit of time. He needs a few more roaches and zerglings out before he can start fighting this front on. Very, very aggressive move here out of Hitman coming out. It's rare that you actually get to see this in the pro level play. A hit this early on. But that's a lot of units he has. He's trying to keep those roaches alive at the front. At nine minutes here at the moment, those two immortals are doing a lot of damage. Will he be able to clean it up? He has the queens, though, there at the front. They're going to be able to focus down a lot of these units. Oh, a lot of those immortal shots going onto Zerglings. Hitman is focused firing them, but just not enough oh. to support because oh. the Zerglings back home. Oh. Oh, he manages to get away just barely with the two immortals in that warp prism. But still, surely the follow-up here for Hitman is go again. It's, it's got to be. There's still only one gas mining. Oh, actually, he's not even mining from that gas, right? Like, he did completely yeah. stop even that one. Just to warp in zealots alone. Yeah, it's just non-stop zealot production. I mean, that's all he's going for here. It's just seven gate zealots, but he does... Oh, look at this horde of Zerg units. A laser's pumping out so much stuff off a 50 drone economy, trying to take these rocks down to buy some time. Oh, the, yeah, the immortal is going to actually break that down and help it so it can just continue on. Bring one of the immortals over, maybe. Oh, picks it up and drops it back again on the other side so you can continue working on that. Still no gas, just sell it, sell it, sell it. Oh, this is looking still very frightening for a laser. He doesn't have many roaches Zealots. here. He's only got six roaches out, and that's a lot of zealots. Like, Hitman actually doesn't have enough damage in this army. He needs to get more roaches balled up uh, before he can fight this. This second yeah. wave is looking very frightening. Very frightening. There's so many zealots. He's trying to move himself into a spot where all the zealots can't fight at once here. Very, very important move. As some of the zealots in the middle are all bottled up at the moment and aren't exactly able to oh, fight. When the immortal awesome. goes down, that is uh, massive. That's so much of that anti roach power going and the zealots are getting stuck behind each other. The positioning yeah. from a laser is fantastic. Yeah, really good at bottling that up, but still there's so many zealots left oh, over. Oh, he for tried Hitman. to pull back to get away from the zealots, but he gave them more surface area. He cornered himself. A laser's army is starting to crumble here, and there are still so many zealots yeah. alive. Oh my god, is Hitman gonna do it? He's gonna kill the roach horn. He's gonna get onto the roach horn. The zealot swarm <laughs> completely overpowers the swarm on the other side of the map. This is this is ridiculous. There's more zealots out there than there are other units here for a laser. There's still so many Zerglings being built, but Zerglings are not what a laser needs. We 24. said it earlier, you need that big ball of roaches, and he just doesn't have it right now. These zealots are taking too long to die. Oh, they, my God. Even though he's kiting, he's going to run out of creep spread. He can't run forever against this. Hitman, in his first appearance here in the Premier League, is probably going to be able to take this first game. He just has a, a superior army here at the moment. They don't really get on top of uh, the Zerg's army too easily, but when they do, and 31 kills on that immortal as well. This, this is uh, this is Hitman uh, showing us some some flair here. Yeah, you know, people say the game's over if that first attack doesn't work as Protoss, but Hitman says, no, it isn't. You just keep making more zealots oh, and you go. <laughs> Drone arrest. <laughs> oh, dear. Almost. No, not allowed. Not allowed. Hitman's going to pick up that immortal once again, just try and keep it safe. Zealots at the ramp going to hold on strong, and he's lost 30 workers. He is down so much in economy. There is nothing to be able to counter these zealots, and a laser has got to be a little bit flabbergasted. GG. Hitman will take game at number one. Look at that smile on his face. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know, if you haven't played against Hitman before, you're just not necessarily prepared. Like, I've played against him so many times, and it takes months of him grinding your face into the dirt to really respect the power oh. of these builds. Look at it, Laser. He knows. He knows he should have been victorious there. He knows he should have been able to shut that down. Oh, he had almost double the economy of Hitman there, and... He just, uh, you know, he, he just didn't get up that big ball of roaches after the first yeah. wave. He, it looked like he felt he was just in such a great position. He added more drones, kind of just built Zerglings for the map presence. And suddenly that second wave was like, there's like 30 zealots with those immortals. It was absolutely insane. 
Yeah, he added so many more Zerglings after that. You're totally right. I mean, once you have that many Zerglings going up against that many Zealots, not exactly the best position to be in. But anyway, for now, we are going to go to a break. And when we are back, it will be game number two between Elaza and Hitman. Welcome back to the World Championship Series here as the final moments. Even a laser had to smile <laughs> after that one because Hitman showed him, you know, who's boss when it comes to how many zealots you can make. That was that was that was a lot of zealots there. <laughs> a lot of zealots. And man, they just kind of came up there and there was that moment where it's like, oh my god, a laser got an immortal down. He's like, he's choking up the zealots and like they're not dying. Yeah. <laughs> There's like 30 zealots there and these 10 roaches and these three queens are kind of tickling them, just not getting the job done. Well, getting on to Coda here now, Pig. What do you make of this map? Is is Hitman just going to do the same thing? No, oh, not the exact same one, but no. You know, that's actually his specialty. What we saw last game was doing one of these builds with no gas or almost no gas. He mines a little mm. bit at the start and he just goes into pure zealot production so that he can just have the most insane meaty reinforce. And because so few Protoss players do this because it's such an all-in, all-or-nothing move, yeah. He, you know, the Zerg players often aren't prepared for it. And we saw in that game, you know, a laser held the first wave, thought he was in a great position, and then suddenly was just completely surprised by the second wave that came his way. I was say, in professional level play over here in Europe, I haven't seen that one for a long time. I, I spoke to you briefly about it in the break there. It's like two years since I've seen somebody try and pull that kind of strategy out. But there you go. Hitman brings it back and shows how it's able to do big damage here in game number one. Let's get into game number two. As we have a laser going up against Hitman. Hitman is one game away from going up against the menacing Scoot. As we have spawned down to the bottom right hand corner, it is our blue Zerg representing Team Extreme Supremacy. It is Elaser. Taking a hard loss in that game one, but he seemed to understand what went wrong there. Yeah. He seemed to collect himself. And then up to the top left hand corner, trying to steal the Zealot King title away from San, it is Hitman. I love that cheeky grin after that first game. <laughs> he knew he knew he got away with it. Everyone was asking the question, will the same builds that this guy's been doing for ages on ladder, are they gonna work on the big stage? And we already have that answer. And you could see the, the relief and the kind of joy Hitman had like, hey, I've been doing this build for years and it's gonna work up here, all right. And he's gotta have so much confidence going into this next game. Yeah, yeah, and one would seem, think so here, Elisa. Well, he kind of anticipated this. I, you know, I said it before. He'd spoken to me. He was expecting the cheese to come along. He was able to shut down the first wave, but not the second one. That was uh, a little tough there for him. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, Hitman's going to be going for that gate first opening here, going out with an early probe scout. Interestingly, we haven't seen uh, either of uh, some of Hitman's favorite builds yet, the uh, proxy gates inside your main base, or the single proxy gate with the cannon rush. Looks like he's going to be playing more standard, quote-unquote, openings so far. And interestingly, a laser this game, not opening quite as safe, is going to say, look, I can take that hatch first this game. I don't need to play with that 14 spawning pool. I can take I can take at least a little bit of a risk here. All right, we'll see now. 
what Hitman's going to be able to conclude from getting over here with this probe scout. Not too much, but <laughs> Elaser is having none of it. He will trail that probe just in case. You never know what is going on. That's a Hitman probe, man. Yeah. You see a regular probe, you're like, oh, yeah, that could, that could do a few things. You see a Hitman probe and you feel a chill run down your spine. And Elaser right now, he's one game you know, one loss away from going down to the losers match. And he wants to go through in first place. He's been saying yeah. it since yesterday. He says, you know, I'm going to win 2-0. Uh, then I win 2-0 against the winner of the other match. And, you know, I'm going to make it through to Poland. And he wants to play in front of that home crowd, crowd audience so yes. much. You know, he's the, he's the newest Polish pro player performing at this level. And he hasn't had that chance yet. And he really wants to do it. Oh, I imagine he can if make he did. it happen. If he did, that would be fantastic for him. I still can't get over how many zealots there were in that last game. It was as if they were popping out of zergling eggs, and there was just like two from every single warp, and then it just it just became ridiculous. I think there were 24 zealots at one point during the end of that uh, in that initial game. All right. Well, gonna throw himself his nexus down up towards the natural and. Probe will just head on back here. So no shenanigans from this probe, uh, despite trying to lure his opponent into a false sense of insecurity. Yeah, I mean, the is doing quite a safe opening nonetheless. Uh, even though he opened up with the hatch first, he's going into a fast gas before going for the third base, already starting that zergling speed. So looks like laser wants to be prepared that fast zergling speed once again. I mean, if we look inside Hitman's base, we can see he still hasn't taken a second gas. Mm -hmm. And that could mean he's planning to do uh -oh. some aggression here. We do see, oh, a Robo going down super uh -oh. early once again. Now, wouldn't that be the killer if you go for the exact same build again? The, the mind games that plays with a laser, the amount of pressure that puts on him, the amount his ego feels threatened by the, just the thought of losing to it yeah. again. I'll be Ooh. honest, man. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping it's the same build again just so we can witness it. Uh, we didn't get enough of Hitman in game one. We need more of Hitman in game two, that's for sure. We need more zealots. I just want to see... As, we, need a, we need a zealot counter because if he's going to do the same thing again, we need to know exactly how many are coming out. Oh, uh, oh he has spotted. spotted the robo really early once again and that's got to that's gotta mess with the laser's head. He has the task ahead of him right now to stay calm. We actually see him hitting a supply block on 36 supply. So uh, maybe the nerves getting to him a little bit after that shaky first game. Mm. And laser's still got to read into this. Remember, he doesn't have to commit to just this like very little gas mining attack. However, with still no second gas down, it looks like Hitman is pretty much restricting himself, saying this is the exact same build. There is zero variance. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it. Even the Zerglings poking at forward front, they're like, oh, Stalker. Oh, all right then. Well, <laughs> there won't be many more of those. Uh, one would suspect here. As the Warp Prism is already heading over, going to warp in a few Zealots, not just the one going over there. Yeah, going to make a slight adjustment there, put on a bit more pressure. We do see, you know, a laser's spotted that there's no extra gases going down. So he should be able to read into this, knowing exactly what's coming his way. And he's actually got as many drones as he needs for the rest of this game. Like, he's building a bunch of speedlings. He's waiting for his Roach Warrant. And all he needs to do from there is just build non-stop roaches. His mistake last game was building too many Zerglings, but oh wait, the Zealot oh. Force Field's trying to trap the Queen there, not quite managing to take her down. That would have been a very good pickup for yeah. Hitman, but doesn't quite get it. We're back at it. Zero gas coming in for Hitman. It's time, boys. It's time for the Zealots. As Hitman here is just going to be going full mineral balls to the wall here. And from that point on, oh, let's, let's hope he's got enough roaches. I think I've just got the hunch, though, that Elaser might have enough roaches this game. We'll see. You know, it looks like he's doing what he needs to do. He's just holding down that R key. He's not overthinking things right now. The pressure that he's under seeing the exact same build was don't overthink it. Don't get panicked. Yeah. Still going for that really nice link counter attack like he did last game. That's fantastic. This is forcing that Mothership Core to use that Nexus Cannon at home. And then those links can still get back to the other side of the map to defend in time. Right, well, the Stalker's already being annoying, actually. He'll probably get himself an Overlord if the Zerglings don't come around and swing him for the kill. But this is still going to be a lot of Zealots. Oh, How many roaches yeah. do we have? Oh, oh no, the Zerglings around. The War Prism's out oh. of position. He accidentally picks up the Zealots rather than the Immortal. Oh, One no. Immortal already down. That is disastrous for Hitman. He's trying to save his second Immortal as well. He will be able to get it out of the way in time, but that's so many roaches that have already worked through the Zealots there. And I think, there you go, GG. That will be game number two here, going to Elaza in this best of three. And from game one to game two, yeah, Elaza doesn't look impressed. <laughs> he shut that down pretty well, pretty, pretty handily there. I mean, 
It was it's it's kind of a, a a really risky, funny card that uh, Hitman played there, right? He said, "This build just just actually worked, kind of when it shouldn't have. You scouted it immediately. Mm. You did some damage with some zerglings at the start, and it still worked." You know what? If I do this again, this might just mentally destroy you. Like it might just play this sort of mind game on you, where you kind of defeat yourself. But a laser, he did exactly what he needed to do there. He played that yeah. so perfectly. You saw with the roach count together, everything just started to fall apart for Hitman so quickly. And you know the Zergling counter attack at home, it was very well orchestrated. Orchestrated by a laser. Yeah, he seemed to learn from his mistake there. Well, you know it's coming that early, and just being able to say, well, okay, this is exactly the same as last game. Uh, you're going to be able to deal with it here as a laser. But now, going into game at number three, Iron Fortress. What does Hitman bring to the table? Do we see more Zealots? I, mm. I wouldn't mind it because my Zealot counter keeps going and ticking. Well, if we think about it, we've only seen one Hitman build so far. Maybe uh, one of the other ones he's famous for is a one gas seven gate. And this base, mm. if you look how far away the third base is for a Zerg player, very hard to defend against those early Stalker Zealot rushes. So uh, he might be going for one of those. Of course, it's going to be interesting as well. How threatened does the laser feel here? Does he feel he needs to open up super safe? Does he need to drone scout? Mm. There's a lot of risks running through his head right now, and he doesn't want to go down to that loser's match. I've got to ask you, I mean, I think you played on the North American server quite a bit against Hitman. Oh, yeah, Hitman. absolutely. I've been playing against uh, him a lot over the last few months. Okay, so over those last few months, how, how many times have you fallen victim to the Hitman? Uh, a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, usually when I've gotten into my rhythm and, and had enough experience, I start to probably win more than I lose, but it's... As soon as he gets serious, he's always got a fresh tick trick up his, his sleeve, yeah, and it yeah. always surprises you, and you almost always lose. All right, let's get into it. Spawning up to the top right-hand corner, we have our blue Zerg, representing Team Extreme Supremacy. It is Elaza. Wants to go up to that winner's match. And up to the top left-hand corner, we have our red Protoss. It is Hitman. Beautiful start in game one, that series. Going for a wild follow-up with an exact replicant build. Going against some of the uh, the things we kind of assume, which you normally mm. do here in, in StarCraft 2. You know, you're always trying to hide your strategies, you change them up. Hitman went for the exact opposite, sort of uh, next level mind game. Didn't quite work out, a laser kept it together. And now Hitman has already sent himself his probe out, which usually when you do something like this as a protoss, with that pylon down towards the bottom, it's normally a cannon rush, but yeah. he gets in here and spots his opponent super quick, and this might tip a laser off. He, If you remember back a season or two ago, he shut down Showtime uh, oh, on the same yeah. map for the exact same reasons. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, once you see that probe come that early as a Zerg player, you almost always drop a fast spawning pool. And you can see it there for a laser going down very early. He's saying, look, normally if you send a probe out, you're probably going for that pylon on the low ground, hoping to go for the forge first. And it's very likely Hitman is just going to try and deny this expansion. Look at this probe just running circles. Uh, of course, there's no money for a laser yet, so he actually doesn't need to be blocking it so early. But he's not aware that there's no that there's a spawn pull down. So yeah. Hitman's just going to go for the Nexus behind this. Yeah, definitely if that probe hadn't have scouted it out his opponent's location first, he could have gone forge, easy peasy. But because he scouts him out first, he ends up in this weird situation where you're like, okay, I found them so early, now they're expecting it. No, oh, I guess I'll have to go into the Nexus first as the compensation move. Exactly. I mean, it's uh, it works out pretty even for both players. And interestingly, he is still following it up with a forge. I thought he might do like a Hitman special where... Uh, you just go, oh, I guess I'll just do a gate after Nexus on the low ground and kind of uh, go as greedy as possible. But it looks like Hitman is going to kind of dot his uh, dot his I's, cross his T's, make sure he's covering all his options and go for what is a very typical forge opening here. Very fast wall off. Yeah, just walling himself in. And then from there, we can see him even, he could, in theory, get his plus one out nice and fast here. And I see you have been doing some reading. Good job, pig. Uh... <laughs> As this probe is going to get there, back in there, confirm that the natural is down. And may have even seen the drone heading up towards the third as well. Mm. Looks like uh, the Overlord coming through, seeing absolutely everything that's going on. Interestingly, a laser actually moving it down to the natural. He just needs to check whether or not there's a nexus down there. And uh, he, once he sees that, he's going to feel a sigh of relief. That, oh, okay, you're not doing anything too crazy. All right, well, these Zerglings know exactly what's up there. We'll be after to fall on back as third base goes down as well. Hitman, there is a second gas down in this game. So, you know, what uh, you were saying previous, of maybe something like a gateway pressure 
could come along. The, the, the thing is, is that's interesting about it is that with Forge openers, it does normally slow down for the Protoss, those kind of gateway timings that you would normally see because off the fact of a gateway first or a nexus first, that normally gives it a bit more punch, but this is slightly different. Yeah, it kind of slows it down a lot. Normally you're going to see a fast plus one upgrade if you do go for one of those gateway uh, ones because there's just not as many scary options. So as the Zerg player, there's more comfort here right at this stage. You can see a laser's just pounding out drones, hasn't even started any gas yet. And uh, the reason is, you know, the, he knows the warp gate is just so delayed. However, Hitman also has that same degree of safety where his initial wall off makes him so safe that he can just probe as hard as he wants and then suddenly swap into one of those later timing attacks. Yeah. And it can be just as scary. Uh, there's plus one on the way here for Hitman. Oh, he cancelled it. No. Oh, I was going to say, of course, the Zealots were fantastic in their previous game, but what if he had them with plus one? And he's decided <laughs> not to go for that. Uh, looks like just going for Mothership Core in a century right now. Meanwhile, Laser has dropped his double gases in his natural. Is going to be starting to mine that up while pounding out these drones. And quite a stable economy start for both players here. Interestingly, oh my, Hitman taking gases on his natural. Doesn't look like he's got anything too cheeky in mind this game. Might actually play against his image. Just go for a fast third Nexus. Look at that. The probe's already heading up. And I don't think the Zergling spotted that probe heading out on this path, at least. I think he may have seen them uh, the probe trying to sneak out earlier uh, and was unsuccessful, of course. But for now, about third base is up. So a laser will be checking and making sure he gets full confirmation. Mm, yeah, Laser really, he's a little bit nervous right now. He was kind of stocking lava uh, a bit, mm. but now seeing this, he's going to go, oh, okay, you are going for a third, ba third base. Immediately we see seven extra drones queue up, and Laser says, oh, okay, it's not a sneaky timing attack. All right, I feel comfortable now. And uh, this is actually something which people don't really realize Hitman is good at, but he can take a third base and play a Stalker style very well. The question is, though, is, oh, okay, he started probes again. I thought he'd stopped for a while there, which technically he had for a moment. I was wondering if he was just going to fake the third base. We have seen a few Protoss oh. do it in the past. And that's actually quite the wall Actually, off. Actually, I, I think I recognize this build. This build got me like seven times in a row on ladder when I was playing Hitman. <laughs> he's going to fake it, right? No, it's not a complete fake. No? So basically, he's going to go up to about 50, maybe 55 probes. Okay. But because he's not putting down the twilight and because he's going into these gateways oh. very fast, he can do a very strong stalker sentry pressure. And because it looks like a third base, and he is committing to it to some extent, this attack can be a little bit surprising. And it's going to push out very soon if he does choose to do that. Is Look at this. Oh, so many gateways finishing up. He's going for the Twilight Council now, but he still has the option to do a very hard push out. But on the other side of things, looks like a laser might be, might be going for something of his own. Yeah, he's got a lot of roaches and zerglings on the way here with plus one weapons and uh, roach speed going down as well. Could be maybe a little bit pressure of, for, of his own, but that's going to be a lot of sentries uh, to be able to greet that initially. Spots it with the Zealot. Yeah, he's got about 150 energy in the Mothership Core as well. We'll have a Nexus Cannon immediately and another one soon to follow it up. The natural wall protected by a cannon will help out there a lot. And uh, Hitman's going to try and warp in a lot more Stalkers to defend against this Roachling aggression. An extra Cannon going to go down there. The sentries have to be very, very careful about this at the moment. Oh. The Mothership Core might even have to recall them to a safer location at some point because they are out in no man's land. And this pile actually denies the warp in. So that is big, big damage. He hasn't cast here. the Nexus Cannon yet. Hitman, no. what, what's going on? The Nexus uh. Cannon only goes down oh, no. now. The sentries are in the open. The Zerglings getting on top of them. So many force fields having to be used. And the Roaches are still getting on top. Zerglings are in the main base as well here, so he is taking economical damage while everything is on top of that natural. And then Laser just really bringing the fight to Hitman this game, saying, nah, let's not play these silly games anymore. Let's just instantaneously triple your economy if you were ever trying to do anything further than a two-base play. Oh, it's such a great play from a laser. Would have been prepared for any sort of sneaky attack, but at the same time, goes into Hitman's macro play and tears it apart. Great Roachling aggression from a laser, even looking to capitalize on top of the third base. This is just a very solid attack, and as those last sentries are going to get surrounded, that is the end of Hitman's hope. All of his energy units dying. Yep, very few, little left, very little left. One more immortal pops here with the second one trying to be Chrono boosted out, but the Zerglings work their way into the mineral line, and that is going to be even more hits taken here on the economy and that is GG a laser wins the series 2-1 and we'll be moving on to the deciders match to play against Snoot coming up next oh, what a comeback for a uh, laser there regaining his calm composure after that game one 
and looking there with that expression, not too uh, elated over that victory, looking more just comforted that what he expected to happen did happen in the end. Yeah. He managed to make it out yeah, of good, that game. Good stuff, Eliza. Uh, good stuff by him to make sure that he's not going down to the elimination match uh, in a group like this, which, you know, as the group evolves on further and further, because it is two Zergs and two Protoss, both going into PVZ at the very beginning of it, you see more games of the players as you're here, and you see what they're kind of going to bring to the table on the day, which is very, very important. So yeah. you can have a lot of players that do try and react and change uh, midway through a group. Exactly, and that's why you always don't want to show uh, all of your plays uh, too quickly, yeah. too early on. And uh, it's something where if you can get out of here in, in first place, it just gives you confidence for the round of 16 as well. It's only a couple of weeks away in Poland. And if you've got these builds you've been working on and refining for months, you don't want to then go and show all your different trump cards, all yeah. your curveballs in the round of 32. All right, well, we're done here. Let's head off to the analysis desk to see what the lads think about that previous series. Thank you very much, Kolaris. Joined here by Sam and Johan. Um, a series that was a little bit longer than some of them, but still super aggressive. What are your thoughts there? Uh, Hitman, he stole a game here, didn't he? Map number one. He did, and he loved it. He wasn't going very well, and then uh, he did the classic Protoss thing where you never transition, made more zealots, and as he was winning this game, I was actually uh, starting to write a letter where I was apologizing to every Zerg player in the world because this was... I don't think it should have worked, but I think maybe, obviously, you know, I'm joking and all, but Elazer made a bunch of mistakes here and yeah. there, and in the end, uh, the, the cheese worked. But uh, then in the next two games, kind of what we expected, I expected it to be a 2-0, but in the end, in the next two maps, just solid enough in defense. And in the last map, it was interesting, because even though it went south very quickly, I do think that what Hitman was going to do is pretty clever, where he was like trying to play to his image, pretending he was going to be super aggressive, but really, he was on as many workers as he laser there when he got hit towards the end, but he kind of fell apart. You could tell yeah, this yeah. kind of micro game is not really where he's comfortable. But, you know, game one, certainly where he was comfortable, uh, but mistakes from a laser, though, that gave the victory away. Yeah, I mean, a laser did kind of initially defend that first attack, like we said, but... He droned up for no real reason. He had the Overlord above Hitman's natural. He saw that then there were no gases taken, yet he still chose to try and sneak in five or six drones where they should have been roaches. So ultimately, that did cost him the game, and I'm sure he's going to be kicking himself a little bit. How exposed has Hitman kind of made himself for the rest of the group now? We kind of known, we know how he's playing and what he's going to do, or the style he's going to approach. Now everyone's going to be on red alert. Yeah, I mean, everyone's thoughts going into this group was like, hey, Jim's a cheesy player, Hitman's supposed to be a cheesy player, player we've got a few cheesy players in this group and now yeah they're, they're just kind of reassured that that is definitely what's going to happen and, and that kind of makes it a little bit easier in a certain way because there were a little few question marks like you said before the game started you're like well maybe he is going to play a macro game maybe he is going to play a longer game but we don't think that's going to happen anymore so that makes it a little bit easier for the other players against hitman well the thing is his next match is going to be a pvp where he's supposedly playing against an also aggressive player but i do think that hitman's levels of aggression are probably above jim so jim i, I don't even think he ever saw a single game of this guy he's yeah. maybe in for a real big surprise all right, that's, uh, that is going to be our next game. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We're going to take a very, very quick break. And when we return, it's going to be a Protoss versus Protoss, an elimination game. We'll find out who's going home, who stays alive.